Hello, Namaste and Adha. I am Lokesh Rasani, third year student at VITAP University and a manager at CSI chapter. Today, I would like to welcome all of you to our first episode of weekly podcast series. And for our first episode, we have none other than the Honorable Vice Chancellor of our University, Sri Kota Reddy Sir, as our Chief Guest. So firstly, I would like to thank you for accepting our invitation and spending your valuable time with us, uh, for giving us this opportunity to host you. Uh, hello sir, no, yeah, sir. Yeah, namaste, namaste. So, firstly, me as a college student, a third year graduate in VITAP University and our team, we know you more as a Vice Chancellor sir and as an engineering student. So when me and our team, when we were uh, going to know more about you and searching more about you, we were simply fascinated by the works which you have done. Firstly, you've been an engineering student like we are and uh, you worked as a professor and later you were a principal and later you worked as a chairperson to, in Dubai and uh, you have done, you've been in IIT Bombay and right now as a vice chancellor. So simply, yeah. what is the mantra or tip you followed over the years for your success or for your journey? So can you explain about it? Yeah, yeah. thank you. Thank you for taking this uh, podcast yes. and uh, it's a great initiation from all of you. Yes, I appreciate you on that. And uh, you're asking uh, about my journey. <laughs> it's a, in half an hour, I can't tell you all those things, but I'll give you some of the highlights. Yes, as you rightly said, I studied engineering, mechanical engineering. I graduated uh, in 1989. Okay, then uh, that time, my ambition was to get uh, university rank. And then, in fact, uh, in the 10th standard, I was topper of the school. And then, uh, in intermediate also, I was topper of the school, uh, junior college. And then I wanted to continue that legacy. Like, uh, I wanted to be the topper of the class. Now, the same way, uh, in engineering also, I studied in uh, Marakwada University. And I wanted to become, I wanted to get some rank and I wanted to be the topper of the, my, my class. So then I was working very hard on it. And then, uh, I mean, it was those days, no internet, nothing. And then it was like books and then read, write so many times and practice. And, uh, you know, mathematics is very, very important subject in engineering. So I used to practice a lot and then uh, some of the applications of mathematics uh, subjects like uh, in, in mechanical engineering, we have uh, thermal engineering, then uh, heat and uh, mass transfer and then refrigeration and air conditioning design, production engineering. These are the, some of the subjects where I focused on and then uh, got university fourth rank. And then that was uh, my ambition got fulfilled. Then uh, since uh, I'm interested in uh, teaching from the beginning, uh, when I was in final year, I used to teach uh, my uh, classmates. And then those who have not cleared the subjects, and then I used to get very good marks and then I used to teach them. And that way, I actually, uh, my interest uh, developed in that uh, teaching. But therefore, I wanted to become a teacher. And then I started my career in 89 itself. As soon as I got my uh, results, I got university for rank immediately. Uh, the principal of the engineering college called me and then told me, if you are interested to uh, be a faculty, uh, we, there is a position, why don't you join? Then immediately I joined, I took it up. And then uh, later on, <coughs> I got uh, some job in uh, DRDO as scientist uh, in 90, 1990, but I did not join. I could not join because uh, there was some medical issue that time. And I mean, so they rejected in the medical test for simple reason. I had squint in the eye those days, and then I got it operated later on. And because of that, they uh, rejected me in the medical test. Then I never, uh, I mean, disappointed on that. Then immediately I have decided to continue in teaching. Then went for applied for GATE, then got uh, the GATE score, and went for masters at CAT Coimbatore Institute of Technology. Then again. There also, I wanted to become a number one in my class, but I was second in the class. <laughs> and then, uh, but with a very good percentage, I graduated. And again, I went, I, my ambition was to uh, do PhD in IIT in Bombay. Then uh, I moved to Mumbai. I joined one of the engineering colleges as, uh, again, Aston professor. Actually, from lecturer to Aston professor. There was some promotion and then I went there. And then I joined for the PhD in IIT Bombay. And uh, the IIT Bombay has uh, transformed my life, I should say. While doing masters also, I gained a lot of knowledge. but. Uh, but when I joined for PhD, it is completely in IIT. It changed my life because there are so many reasons. The kind of uh, opportunity IIT has given as a student is amazing. And then uh, because anything you want to do, you you have been supported. Now also in IIT they support uh, a lot like financially. Suppose you want to do any prototype, they will give funding for that. Nice. And then uh, that way I got very good funding from IIT. They supported me for the patent filing. My professor also supported me a lot in the I during my studies in IIT Bombay. Then we filed uh, seven patents, uh, actually four Indian, two international and one US patent. And uh, I was, uh, I mean, as a student of IIT Bombay, uh, I was uh, holding highest number of patents. And now also I think it is a record. 
but I'm not sure right now because what is the status, but I'm talking about 20 years back. 20 years back, I was, uh, I mean, uh, having highest number of uh, patents, holding highest number of patents as a student of IIT Bombay. So that was again one, one more record. Then, um, uh, then while uh, doing PhD, we have done a lot of uh, um, publications and then after PhD, then in 2004, uh, where I was working in one of the engineering colleges in Mumbai, they promoted me as a professor and head of mechanical engineering. And then from there onwards, my administrative work started, 2004 onwards, and then almost now 20 years. 20 years I am in administration, like a professor and a head of mechanical engineering. Then uh, 2008, I moved to Hyderabad as principal of one, of one of the engineering colleges, and there I worked for nine months. Then I got opportunity in uh, Dubai, for, uh, like uh, Mahe, Manipal Academy of Higher Education in Dubai campus. They invited me to establish engineering for them. Then I went uh, there as a chairperson of uh, engineering programs. Then in four years, I established engineering for them. And then we got uh, the equipment from various uh, countries like uh, uh, Germany, then Thailand. Then from, of course, from India also, we have purchased the equipment and then established a very good uh, engineering program for them. And now, those days, uh, the mechanical engineering was doing extremely good. And now, when I was uh, the chairperson of uh, the, uh, the School of Engineering there, School of Engineering and IT. Then uh, in uh, 2013, after establishing uh, engineering uh, programs for them, Indian School of Engineering and IT, they promoted me as uh, the head of the campus, that is academic president. It is equivalent to pro vice chancellor's position. In 2013 onwards, up to 2020, I was uh, heading the campus, I was uh, working as academic president for pro vice chancellor. Then from there, uh, I got the opportunity here as vice chancellor. And then uh, there are two, three reasons why I moved here. One of the reasons is uh, vice chancellor position, because I was pro vice chancellor. I'm getting, uh, I wanted to become vice chancellor in the life. Therefore, I thought it is the right time to move to India, I thought, and then I came. Then the uh, second reason is, uh, VIT is a uh, very good brand. You know, you all know that uh, the institution of eminence. So I always say, I worked in, I mean, I studied in the institution of eminence, that is IIT Bombay. Then I worked in the institution of eminence, that is Mahe Dubai, Mahe, Manipal Academy of Education. that is also institution of eminence. Then again, I, I came uh, to the institution of eminence. Now, that's what actually, I am proud of that. Therefore, since uh, the VIT is a very good brand, then I moved from, uh, Dubai to here and the third reason is uh, this uh, university is close to my native place because okay, so that is another reason I thought okay I contribute something to my native place of course the states are different my native place is in Telangana but this is Andhra Pradesh but uh, Telugu states are right and uh, my I mean of course my majority of the relatives are in Andhra Pradesh therefore I thought okay I'll, my son in law is from Andhra Pradesh he is from Ponur near Ponur that, that way I thought okay I'll come back and then do some good work here but uh, the same thing away our honorable uh, chancellor Dr. G. Vishnathan said our Vice President uh, Shri Shankar Vishnathan sir, and Dr. Shankar Vishnathan sir, and Dr. G. V. Salam sir, they gave me a lot of uh, support. And then, uh, I mean, anything what we ask for the university, they never said no. They always uh, support and they give guidance. You know, because of that, we have done some good work in uh, VAT AP. Uh, the good work is in the sense, there are many areas that we have improved on. Uh, last three years, we have done significant work. Of course, it is the teamwork, the entire uh, faculty members, research scholars, and students, including students, all of you. You have contributed a lot to the university. Uh, because of that contribution, and uh, we are publishing uh, papers in uh, Scopus Index uh, journals. And uh, I'll tell you a small example how we progressed. In uh, 2021, uh, we published uh, 100, uh, 250 papers in 2021. In 2022, it became uh, 661 papers. And in 2023, now this uh, uh, the uh, calendar year, we are aiming to publish more than 1,000 papers. And then so every year, there is uh, yes. uh, yeah, yeah, growing. And I mean, I'm happy to say that it's hundred percentage growth. Yes, it is not uh, five, yeah, 10, I mean, not fifteen. Yeah. Growth. It's hundred percentage growth exponentially. We have grown, and we are expecting that same growth uh, in future also. And then uh, the other area is uh, patent publications. So patent publications also. Our faculty members, research scholars, and students have done significant work. And then we have published uh, three hundred eighty-eight uh, patents. We are very close to four hundred now. Four hundred patents publications is not easy, and. Uh, uh, we are number one in the country for patent publications in emerging uh, state private universities. And then, of course, publications also we are uh, uh, number one in the country uh, under emerging uh, state private universities. I'm, I'm just uh, categorizing there because uh, we, we can't uh, compete with uh, VAT Vellore because it's an old institution, our own institution. Yes. You know, but we we follow the uh, we take the footsteps of our uh, parent campuses, and we are growing in that uh, direction. And uh, and coming to the rankings in Outlook ranking in uh, 2022. We are number one in the country under emerging state private university, and same thing we retained again in 2023. Yeah, and because of all these things, uh, the ranking also is good. Now we are working on uh, NAC, because in NAC also we are aiming for a good rating, 
and uh, initial our aim is A double plus. We are trying towards that, but we are not sure exactly we will get A double plus or not, but we will try for it. That is what actually is our aim. Trust the process yeah, yeah. and the results will be good. Yes. Then uh, not only the NAC uh, uh, accreditation, we are also looking uh, for uh, NIRF and then later, once we get NIRF, NAC and then we will move on to QS banking. So many things are there in the plan. But definitely with the commitment and hard work of our uh, all faculty members, staff members, research scholars and students, we will be able to achieve our uh, targets. That is what about uh, the journey in, in brief. Yes, sir. Last uh, 33 years I am in the teaching profession. You know, though I got a DRDO job, then I got government job also, another polytechnic lecturer. But I did not join. I wanted to pursue my PhD in IIT Bombay. That was the aim. Then I uh, worked towards that and then my dream got fulfilled and then now I am happy that I am heading the, I'm the Vice Chancellor of this prestigious JTAP University. It's a quite interesting and a very inspiring story to hear. Yeah. Sir, I would like to ask you one question. Like you have done your uh, engineering back in 1980s and me personally, I am doing in 20, I am a 2021 batch student. So you have seen both. You have seen other students and you have studied back then. So what differences you find in the education system, the administration, the students and all things? I will tell you there is a huge difference from there and now. The 1980s, 80s, uh, there was no computer. Actually computer came uh, I think 85 that, that time. But uh, that is actually the showpiece in the college because we can't go and touch it. And that kind of uh, precision uh, uh, equipment it is. And then, uh, but uh, of course, uh, the uh, the fundamentals, uh, I mean, remained the same. The fundamentals, like uh, those days and now, uh, the fundamentals have uh, remained same. But the applications have uh, grown up like anything. Particularly, uh, you know now computer science, how the, uh, the that is all. Uh, these are all engineering applications. You know, like AI, then uh, then uh, machine learning, then uh, then uh, the blockchain. All these things are applications of uh, the computer science. And uh, of course, uh, the uh, mechanical engineering also, all four engineering like civil engineering, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, uh, these were uh, doing extremely good those days. But now also the core engineering, I mean if, if we don't focus on core engineering, tomorrow uh, there will be uh, imb imbalance in the society. You know, the jobs are only one direction and the other jobs will be, no skilled uh, people will be there in the other jobs. Therefore, it has to be balanced appropriately. Of course, when the demand is more uh, for the computer science and engineering, of more number of students should be there. But at the same time, other uh, branches should not be neglected. And now, coming to the education, those days also we used to, we don't have internet those days, but then we used to read from the textbooks. More uh, textbooks we used to read, and we used to prepare the note, notes in the classroom, and then come and then revise those uh, I mean, notes. And then sometimes we only prepare some notes, like, uh, I mean, from various books. I used to keep ten, five to ten books and then see in which uh, book it is explained neatly, any concept. Now we used to prepare the notes, and then um, some of my friends used to take my notes and then they prepare. And then that, that way, we used to refer many books, textbooks mainly we were doing those days. But nowadays, uh, now the internet is there, you will get uh, everything on internet. And uh, one thing I observed that of course, uh, the generation also will change. I don't want to blame any generation. Those days, okay, that was good. And now, this is another trend. And uh, I'll tell you one more, as you asked me, what is the difference those days and now? You now, in the when I was a lecturer, like you, when I was very young, and I went to the classroom, Okay, then if they are not attentive, I used to say stupid and useless fellows, you don't know these, I mean, you should be concentrating, what are you doing, uh, I'll uh, ask you to get out from the class, don't attend, I mean, be attentive, yes. those things we used to tell, but uh, those days, uh, nobody raised an objection to that, okay, they said, okay, that's uh, like uh, Guru and Shishya, those, I mean, the old uh, days, no? yes. okay, then they swallowed it, whatever they say, uh, whatever they say it's good for you, like that they used to think, but now the generation has changed, now we stopped using, I, of course, long back, I stopped using those words, because I don't want to hurt the students, the feelings of the students. Then uh, we used to say that, uh, I mean, if you don't concentrate here, uh, you will come, you will not come up in the life. Okay, therefore, you have to concentrate uh, on these things only. Yes. You know, those are the words, focus only on the subject, those are the things, and only studies, don't go here and there, don't, I mean, all those things. See, that those days, actually, the overall personality development was not much. Okay, then the students were mainly focusing on uh, studies. But now the trend is changed. Now, along with your studies, you should be good in uh, extracurricular activities. Those days also were there, but the preference was more preference was given to the education. Now also, we are giving more preference to the education, I mean studies. But <coughs> apart from that, you should focus on extracurricular activities also. The trend has changed. You should so have overall student growth. Yeah, yeah, overall personality development has to happen for the student in the university. Then uh, you will uh, get very good placement and then you will be successful in the life. The trends have changed. But of course, uh, the, I mean, faculty as a faculty, we also have to change according to the generations. Now, if I um, stick to my old uh, thought process, then I will not fit in the new generations. Therefore, we also have to change. 
no when i'm talking to you i also feel that i'm young like you so then then all of the things will uh, change cope up with this yeah cope and i always uh, request faculty also that please uh, change your way of teaching the way of uh, dealing with students because now this generation we need to deal differently okay then of course we have to tell them the right we have to show them the right path at the same time we have to praise them also and we have to give that uh, space to the students that's what actually i feel sir i am an engineering student right now if i mm. complete my graduation and i go out from this campus especially i will personally miss my ho- uh, hostel days for sure the campus and everything is there anything you miss from your engineering days you know no, those days i'll tell you this uh, though we were uh, staying in the hostels the, i mean for me it was main thing was uh, concentrating on studies because i'm i'm as i told you i have been uh, interested in teaching therefore i wanted to be strong in the academics all subjects i wanted to be thorough so therefore i got a fourth rank in the btech and then b and me i got university second rank also now for me uh, i mean my friends used to enjoy a lot but then i was more concentrating on studies okay i used to play cricket and uh, some extra those days and then um, but i used to watch uh, the cricket and then i used to play also we had team when i was uh, doing engineering but then of course before that also i played cricket but then afterwards because of uh, the um, i mean concentrating on the studies and wanted to do something good then i stopped all those activities but i suggest all of you to excel in the sports also sports as well as cultural for your overall, overall personality development and you should enjoy the, the campus life but of course we all have the boundaries we should not cross our boundaries okay those things one has to keep you should not forget the main motto of this our uh, main motto your studies and then at the same time see you have to balance everything suppose you um, concentrate on rest of all rest of all things and then don't concentrate on studies don't attend the classes then also is a problem therefore you have to balance all activities life that's is what i always tell students yeah life is <coughs> like this it's always challenging and competition is increasing year after year therefore year on year competition is increasing therefore according to that you also should uh, i mean enhance your skills such that you will excel in the life me as a pre final year student yeah. it is time for me to take it seriously about my placements So yeah. you've been someone who've been closely associated with the college placement. So how do you think about the college placements and how they are going? See, first thing is uh, you should be very strong in your academics or placements. Therefore, CGPA, CGPA you should get uh, sub, uh, should you should get a very high CGPA. And uh, I have seen several students who miss the placement because of a fraction of uh, less CGPA. Like you need nine CGPA for some companies, and you have eight point nine gone, zero point one CGPA less. You are out of the competition. I mean, you are out of the job. Now that kind of scenario should not happen. And aim for all students should aim for high CGPA. Okay, then attend the classes regularly. Our professor also says that hundred uh, percent is attendance one should have. He used to attend hundred percent. I was also attending hundred percent. If I miss a class, then I used to be very sad. Why I am missing? I never miss any class, but without any reason. If I am missing a class, I I think one or two occasions because of some other um, uh, events, I missed the class. But then I felt very sad. Why I should? Why I am not attending the class? therefore attendance should be there good cgpa then afterwards uh, extra curricular activities what i said and you have should be very strong nowadays the computer science jobs are plenty and whether you are from mechanical or electrical or electronics any branch you should be very strong in the coding and vat is uh, vat ap is giving a lot of opportunities for you for your soft skills development okay soft skills training is there along with that we have had several agencies for your coding and other things and you should participate in hackathons all those hackathons which are happening and then you, you should crack all those things then your cv and apart from that you should have the certifications industry certifications we are doing right. we have plenty of industry certifications okay uh, yeah you are doing right now so then uh, all these certifications also add value to your degree and uh, when you go for placements your cv should be very strong okay now if you do all these things your cv earlier my days cv is only the percentages of uh, 10th class 12th standard and then engineering and uh, only that much and uh, suppose if i have written some paper i mean if i have written some papers we'll add only those but nowadays the cv is not that the cv of your students should uh, contain all these things whatever we have discussed and then you were uh, shortlisting to the company is possible cgpa then certifications uh, we were uh, competitions i mean certificates of various competitions and then coding how strong you are all these things matter for the placement then you will get very good placement then we are providing those opportunities now last year we got 93 percentage and uh, before that also 93 percentage placements we achieved and this year as of now the uh, placements are around 25 to 30 percentage but we are expecting uh, again 90 above 90 this year also but you need to all students uh, need to study well and the, uh, the there is a downtrend uh, in uh, uh, the market also and then uh, there is little uh, 
round rank but then nevertheless uh, vat hello i mean vat the group is doing good in the placement sense okay now i think uh, last year also the companies visited na more than uh, 900 and uh, 950 companies have come for the placement that is record in the entire country sir uh, just to put you in a point of bother for thinking mm-hmm. you've been an engineering student you've been a professor you've been an uh, vice chancellor right now gal university and you've mm-hmm. been chairperson what was the most satisfying job or the job which you the best feel uh see the in the teaching profession when you uh, ask your students in the classroom that uh, did you follow the concepts what i've taught you today if everybody says yes that will give you the greatest satisfaction i guess okay that is number one okay number two that was when i was a faculty then i used to take feedback then i used to uh, talk to them and then if anybody is having doubt i used to try to i mean i used to clarify then i used to spend a lot of time with students and projects those days i was uh, 1993 92 those days i was actually the project coordinator also okay then uh, i used to help the students if any project any problem is there in the project any kind of technical help all those things i was uh, doing that was one kind of satisfaction the students uh, i'll tell you one small example in 1989 1989 i started my career as lecturer and 93 student and 94 students still there in touch with me okay then they say that uh, sir what you taught was amazing and then today because of you we are in the great position something like that when they say that also will give us the greatest satisfaction you can't buy that kind of satisfaction with money like that that is uh, number one when you were when you were as a teacher then uh, afterwards when i came to the administration when uh, people uh, remember that uh, see if i am guiding faculty members in the right direction and then uh, they also remember us okay, now also uh, 8, uh, 2004 onwards i was professor and head and 2005 6 whomever i actually changed their uh, what you can say the, their uh, teaching methodologies are uh, they i mean helping them in their career they still remember me okay now that is another kind of satisfaction now i i mean at different levels i am telling you okay then when i became uh, the academic president at mahe dubai when i was pro vice chancellor mahe dubai got uh, the there was qs rating star rating in uh, dubai so then star actually ah uh, yeah then uh, we got five star rating not only that uh, uh, among all the universities participating universities around 17 universities participated there small country no? and uh, out of 17 uh, vat i'm uh, sorry the mahe dubai got is okay then uh, that was actually uh, many uk universities then us universities and then uh, then australian universities they were below us indian university topped uh, in the score that was another uh, very i was very happy that time that means being the indian being indian heading indian university we are number one uh, in that country okay, then that was actually gave me a lot of uh, satisfaction okay, now like this uh, if uh, any student they actually we changed uh, the i mean we used to counsel the students also if they are not doing well there are some students whom i counseled in way back uh, in 8 or 90s and 2004 2005 those times they are doing extremely good in their life now they also tell not only faculty even students also they tell about what i have done for them that also gives a lot of satisfaction overall actually the if uh, students are doing good and that gives us a very great satisfaction 93 i am not happy with placement if it is 100 percent i would be very happy that gives us the satisfaction and not only that highest package also in the last year 34.4 lakhs we got and this year as of now we got around 27 lakhs package but i am telling our placement officers why don't why don't we get uh, 50 lakhs or 60 lakhs package then that also will give us uh, some satisfaction see overall the growth of the uh, faculty members staff members research scholars and students if they are doing extremely good then that gives us the greater satisfaction being head of the institution being vice chancellor i will be very happy if everything goes well okay then if the students see ultimately what is the objective the students should excel in their uh, career okay, they should get very good cgpa good placement and then or good higher uh, higher for higher studies good uh, uh, what you call the good university they should get uh, the uh, uh, admissions so many things are there If, if uh, students are doing good, faculty are doing good, research scholars are doing good, staff members are doing good, being vice chancellor, I'll be the happiest person. And uh, I'm happy. Last three years, we have done significant work with the collaboration, cooperation, and communication. These three C's are very important: collaboration, communication, cooperation. With all three C's, we have done great work, and we will continue to do great work. Sir, this COVID-19 part mm-hmm. must have been a very challenging part or a challenging period for you as an administrative member and the head of the university. either you see in a students perspective attending online classes or faculty giving online classes or the overall thing the curfew and everything mm-hmm. it must have been a very uh, challenging thing for you how do you think our university especially we had online classes exams and everything we did very well so we were very comfortable actually i have been in online classes so how was it challenging for you to face the situations uh, when uh, 
covid uh, started i was in dubai i was not here and then that was uh, march 2020 when uh, the lockdown happened i mean the when uh, in dubai also the uae government uh, kept lockdown and then uh, uh, that was actually march middle of the semester in there in dubai it was middle of the semester and then immediately <coughs> Um, management also asked me what is to be done. Immediately we need to do something for the students because their career is important to us and uh, they are sitting at home. Okay, th nobody can uh, come to the campus. Then what should we do? Then we went to online classes. Then uh, those days, before also we were using online but that was not much. Now, before that we were using uh, Cisco Webex and all those things. Cisco Webex we used to do regularly in Dubai. But uh, that was not used for teaching. We never used for teaching. Okay, then uh, immediately we should, uh, we adopted so many technologies like uh, that time only this Zoom came, then Microsoft Teams, all those things our faculty adopted very quickly. And then we were teaching online. Online, the problem was if the student is serious, they did very well. If the student is not serious, they will actually switch off the video and the audio and then whatever they want to do. But now that created some kind of turmoil. But uh, overall, of course, the, under those circumstances, whatever we have done, we have done extremely well. We tried our best to impart the knowledge. But those who, some students benefit, I mean, some students uh, did not utilize that properly. They are in trouble. Okay, now now also they are still in trouble. But then those who effectively use those uh, online teaching, they are doing well. See, there I, I I don't think any difference is in there in the classroom and then online. If you are attentive, so what happens in the classroom? The teacher is there in front of you. You can't uh, I mean deviate your attention. But whereas online, you are away. And if you switch out the video, we don't know what you are doing. You know that is what what actually the control was not missing there. Because of that, some students uh, misuse that. That's what actually I observed. observed. It that completely also, depends on the student. And yeah, the student and is, is responsible. But in classroom, what happens because of the force, you are uh, concentrating. It's an extra push. Yeah, extra push is there. That is why the, there is a difference between online and offline class teaching. But of course, uh, offline teaching is always better compared to online teaching uh, for uh, majority of the students. If you take a student as a whole community, offline is better than online. Okay, then the blended now it is actually is happening. And uh, see, some blended also is good now nowadays. Yeah. See, meetings also we are doing blended now. And then when I came here in uh, 2020, November I came here, November 16th I joined in 2020 in this our university. So there, uh, that time also it was on and off. Sometimes we used to call the students, sometimes I mean, uh, again we gave the second wave, we gave again uh, the break. And uh, we were a bit, a bit worried, the hostels, it should not spread, no. Yes, yes. It was really tension for us. And then uh, bringing the students into the <coughs> campus, we were literally worried. Like you are the and one staff responsible also. for. Yeah, if anybody is uh, affected with COVID, then uh, I mean, it would, we don't know what what would happen. Second wave was horrible. Yes, sir. But then uh, that time, of course, we closed everything and then we everything we were doing online. But that was tough for us. It was tough days, and uh, I mean, anyway, uh, God is kind enough that we are we are out of that. But it should not come again. Such kind of pandemics. Then it is trouble for everyone, and we don't know what is going to happen. Okay, then uh, first time when it uh, it was hit, uh, no vaccine, nothing was there. And no medicines, and uh, it, we, we were literally worried. And then, anyway, thank God that we are out of that. So, there has been a trend in engineering students. <coughs> Most of the students in the recent years are preferring mm -hmm. computer science, or then okay. you see some branches like civil and mechanical. The students who are coming and joining, the number is decreasing yeah. comparatively more. So, what do you think the reason, and uh, what do you think the future of the branches which the students are now joining? See, the computer growth is a uh, welcoming one because. See, the, nowadays the comfort and then kind of, uh, uh, what you call that, uh, the technology requirements in the gen this generation. Definitely, computer science graduates more are required. But too many also is a problem. Tomorrow the job issue will come. But whereas the other side, like uh, civil engineers, then mechanical engineers, the, uh, and uh, electrical right. engineers, they are also needed because uh, the, of course, the production and uh, what you call that, the construction and uh, the electricity requirements on many things are there. Okay, then therefore, those engineers also are required. One of the things that I feel that it is uh, again, uh, I mean, in future, what is going to happen? Only engineer, that's all. Or the mechanical, or civil, or uh, electrical, or computer science that may vanish after few years. The reason is you should be all rounded. You should know mechanical, you should know electrical, you should know civil, and then you should know computer science. Yes, sir. Then, I which actually have in first year about electrical. Yeah, yeah. design your own degree now yes. is giving, of course, based on your interest you take. But what I am feeling is that in future, in coming 10 years, probably. Only one engineering is there. Okay, then uh, other will vanish because now also we are seeing no. Well, if demand is more for uh, computer science, even mechanical engineering, the student also is taking computer science. I mean, they go for those jobs. Yes. Core jobs are less. But all of a sudden, core jobs also will come up again because 
the production is required. As the population is increasing, we need production engineers. We need design engineers. Now that time, I mean, uh, if you if everybody goes to computer science and engineering, then skill will. Uh, I mean, there, there is no skill uh, people in uh, those areas. Skilled people are not there. So therefore, they will suffer. Therefore, uh, there should be a balance. That's what I am saying. But of course, uh, nothing wrong. One should. I mean, every uh, engineering student should learn computers. They should know the applications part of it. So therefore, I feel that. Uh, uh, all should, uh, I mean, learn everything. Okay, you are uh, being, you are from computer science. Yes, yes. You also should know what is happening in mechanical and then civil and those things. Of course, you can't concentrate everything. But, but at least the basics. Uh, basics you should know. If you take a, a double major, take one computer science double major and take mechanical as another double major. Then you will learn both the aspects. I always say that uh, those days, uh, mechatronics engineering, electronics plus mechanical. I, um, I used to advise the students, you take both. Because 50 percent is mechanical, you will study 50 percent is electronics. You are you are proficient in both. That's what I say. In future also, it is going to happen like that. Multidisciplinary is only the answer for future. Sir, we personally mm. don't know much about you, you know, about your education and yeah, everything. Yeah. But can you share a bit about your personal, like where you are from and all like that? Ah, okay, okay. Actually, uh, my native place is uh, 100 kilometers from Vijayawada. It is in uh, Kamam district of Telangana. So in combined state, it was common district. It was only Andhra Pradesh. And uh, I born there. And then afterwards, schooling, I did there only. Schooling and up to 12th, up to intermediate, I was there only, native place. Then afterwards, I went for engineering. I went for engineering uh, then to Maharashtra. Because those days, very limited number of seats were there in uh, Andhra Pradesh, combined state. So therefore, uh, I wrote the entrance examination, but I did not get the seat there. But I don't want to waste one year. Then uh, we went to Maharashtra. Those days, uh, that time, they started many engineering colleges in Maharashtra. Then I went for engineering. From there, I did not come back. I went to uh, then uh, I went to Coimbatore for uh, masters, and then again went back to Maharashtra. Then went to Mumbai and did PhD. Uh, the work there only. Then uh, my entire career was outside. Only nine months I was in Hyderabad. And then afterwards again I went to Dubai. Then now only I am coming back. This is personal. I mean life. And I have one uh, daughter. She also studied in uh, Mahya Dubai. She did engineering. She did intermediate up uh, in uh, Hyderabad. And afterwards, she came to Dubai and then did internet. Then afterwards, she went for masters, and she got married also. Now they are in uh, US. My son-in-law is from this place. Okay, then uh, he's from uh, near Pune. Okay, then uh, he is working for uh, Walmart right now. He was in Facebook before. Then now he got job in Walmart. He moved to Walmart. And my daughter also was working. Now again, she is at present in India. She will go back and then again search for the job. That's what actually the personal life. Only one daughter I have. Sir, if you are an engineering student right now or if you are of my age joining mm -hmm. into going into an engineering college which branch would you prefer ah uh, okay that is a <laughs> complicated question uh, no no i prefer where i am interested okay then uh, particularly i am interested in uh, mechanical engineering and if uh, my uh, specialization is refrigeration and air conditioning i am interested in that obviously i will take that only <laughs> i will not go to computer science and engineering so, is there someone who you looked up to or who inspired you the most yeah. Uh, when I was uh, doing 10th uh, standard, uh, there was uh, one headmaster. Okay, then uh, that headmaster and those that time, he, he was uh, what you call that. Uh, he was selflessly serving the, I mean, particularly working was working in the school, and he was taking uh, all the other teachers also along with him, selflessly. That means they were not expecting him. Government teachers, government school. Then uh, the uh, public used to respect him a lot because of the kind of work he is doing. Okay, I was thinking that those days. Okay, then if I have to, I mean, if I am becoming a teacher, I should be like him. And then because he is actually he say do government uh, job, but they go beyond uh, working hours. They help the students a lot. They help their, they help students a lot. Okay, that means they did not see uh, whether we, I mean, see nowadays what happens? Government teacher, government means uh, they need not work also. Some people think like that, but they, they were not like that, and they were respected uh, the most in the society. So therefore. And they are the role models, yeah, and uh, that is one role model. Then afterwards, when I joined PhD in IIT Bombay, my professor also is another role model. Okay, then he never said no if I want appointment. He never, uh, he always uh, helped me. Then uh, my his name is uh, Professor Milind Viran. He is professor in IIT Bombay. Still he is there. Okay, then he helped me a lot while doing PhD. Oh, of course, these are all uh, role models. Okay, then uh, when I saw him uh, selflessly working in IIT Bombay, I also felt that okay, I should work like him. Okay, then after completion of PhD in the teaching profession, I should work like him. They're all two role models. Yes, sir. Lastly, any yeah. tip or success tip or mantra you want to give to me and my viewers? I, uh, 
thank you very much and uh, i wanted uh, to tell you that whatever you do you do with the sincerity and uh, honest with the honesty and then uh, automatically you will uh, be successful and uh, you love what you do now suppose if you don't love what you do then you will not excel in the in that particular any subject or anything you take any program you take if you don't love what you are doing you will not be able to succeed be sincere in that and uh, definitely the success will be with you so thank you thanks a lot uh, for accepting our invitation yeah, yeah. and uh, i thank you and uh, uh, i miss lokesh ah uh, lokesh and uh, uh, ashita hima hema kiran ketan ketan shravan the cameraman shravan thank you and uh, i wish you all the very best and do well and uh, definitely i look forward uh, uh, collaboration from cooperation from all the students and we have student council and we have student representatives okay then uh, any issue anything we are there with you and we need to take university to the next level okay and it is responsibility of each one of us like uh, starting from vice chancellor then uh, the registrar and then uh, the faculty members uh, the deans hods directors then uh, the faculty members then staff members research scholars and student of course the parents also it's a responsibility of uh, all the stakeholders i should say okay and uh, i would like to express my sincere gratitude to honorable chancellor sir and uh, our vice presidents for their entire support and the guidance okay thank you i wish you all the best